Okay, here we go. Uh, we're going to do something a little different this month. This is the free fiddle lessons June office hours. Uh, I'll probably explain this again in a second when some folks show up, but for those of you watching after the fact, uh, we're going to do start off by looking a little bit at um, how I go about learning tunes and this computer program called Transcribe that I use to help me uh, slow things down and hear things more clearly. So I've got a little button accordion here. Um, and let me just get the chat thing going here. Uh, and I know that you can't see that after the fact, but uh, it helps me communicate with the folks that are here tonight. Um, it just disappeared on me. Weird. Um, hmm. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's gone. Okay. Um, if I open. Yeah, no. Okay, bad news. Let me just sort this out and then we will get going. Okay. Um, yes, oh dear. Now you get to hear me, hear myself. I'll mute that so you at least don't need to listen to it while I'm figuring it out. Um, here's what I want to do is pop out chat. I had done this already, I had it all set up, and then somehow it disappeared. Okay, here we go. And I'm going to put my sound back on in case that was affecting you guys. I don't think it should. So now I can see what I've got here, but of course all the stuff I wrote disappeared. I had it all ready to go and just hit enter. Um, we are going to start out looking at how I learn tunes and how to use a program called transcribe to help. Feel free to ask other questions and I will get to them. All right, sorry about that. I really thought I was all figured out here, so I wasn't going to need to be obnoxious and sit and type, but that's just how it is. Okay, so let's see if I can figure out how to get the accordion on the screen here, all important. All righty. So this is called a button accordion. Um, just for those of you who are not familiar with this instrument, um, there are two rows of keys, and each one is in in a key. Um, so the outside row on this one is C sharp, the key of C sharp, and the inside one is D. And if we start on the third button and play like a harmonica, so we go in, out, in, out, in, out, out, in, we get a scale, and this scale is C sharp. If we start in the third button on the inside and do the same thing, we get a D scale. And put together, um, these two scales give you all of the notes um, that you would find on a piano, both you know the sharps and the flats, and um, and with a couple of doubled up notes. So like uh, you can play F sharp in both places on or on both rows. So for the key of D, I can play just on the inside row. Um, but to play in G, um, I need a C natural, which is not in the key of D, and I find it out on the on the outside row. Um, See something in the key of G. Nope, that's not actually supposed to be in D. Um, I should have thought about this. Oh, there's a tune I've been learning. There's a C So what you'll get to see is that I've only been playing this instrument for uh, a short while. 
I've had it for a couple of years, and I haven't been a religious practicer, so I'm still figuring out how to play this instrument by ear. Um, and uh, it's a challenge. <laughs> um, and so I'm using this because this kind of puts me more in um, in the shoes of people who are earlier in their learning journey on their instrument. Um, I do have some advantages in that I've been learning this kind of music for a long time and I've been so I can often get tunes in my head faster and I've also been listening to this kind of music since uh, for more than 20 years um, most pretty much exclusively and so that gives me a repertoire of tunes that I am familiar with and also gives me that repertoire of ideas that get used from tune to tune so um, that gives me some advantages in getting the material into my head like I said um, I do okay in D and G and a few tunes in E minor in here, but um, what I'm going to pick is this tune that they played at the session locally, and I can kind of get away with playing it on the fiddle, sort of, as long as somebody else is playing, but I don't really know it. Um, it's called the New Copper Plate. There's also the tune, the Old Copper Plate, which I know a little bit better, uh, but the New Copper Plate, I don't particularly know. Um, so I'm going to give it a try and see if I can pick it up. And I'm going to see if I can figure out how to also do this and show you what I'm doing. And this is part I haven't done before. Oh, good. Um, screen share. Lovely. So I'm going to enter a screen share so you can see um, this program as I got started. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit about it. I'm just going to close up the accordion show you a little bit how this program works and apologies in advance the sound is not going to be so great um, because it's going to be going through the, my own computer speakers so I'll try to do this without playing the tune at you a million times but I want to show you some things so screen share see you see you later okay yes I'd like to share um, entire screen yes you can see everything I've got going here lucky you share okay so I've never done this before, but ah, oh Lord, it's really, I'm seeing a million versions of myself. <clears throat> Let's get out of here. Um, ah, this is freaky. Okay, so now hopefully you're still seeing my screen. Um, this Welcome to my iTunes library. I have searched for new copper, found the new copper plate here. This is the only recording I have it. I have another recording on another computer, but that's what I've got here. I am double, uh, double finger tapping or right clicking on this track. And I'm going to go to Show in Finder. I don't know the best way to do this on a PC, but this is how you want to do it in a Mac. And this shows me where, where that file is on my computer that plays in iTunes. And then I'm going to do the same thing, the right click or the double tap on that track. And I'm going to choose to open it, not with iTunes, um, but with transcribe you can also use the program audacity which is free to do a lot of this stuff but it's cumbersome um, transcribe makes it really simple I did buy it you can try it for a month for free and that was good enough for me um, and you really get to actually use all the features of the program and then after that I think it's 25 or 30 dollars and it is the only program I've ever bought for my computer and it's totally worth it so I'm going to open this in transcribe and it loads this sound file. You can see um, all these spiky bits are the sound. If you've never seen that before, it's kind of cool. So if I just hit the space bar, it will play. Lovely. I'll turn it down and hope that's better for you guys. So this is what the tune sounds like. So I can do useful things. I hit space again to stop it. I can do useful things with this program. Uh, I can select where I want it to start, so I don't need those four potatoes at the beginning. I can slow it down. I can make a loop. By, whoops, that's not what I meant to do. By clicking and dragging. Why is it not letting me do that? There we go. Uh, that seems like about that first phrase. A little too much. So then I can click this and drag it back. Oh, no, I don't want a marker. Cancel. I don't know how I did that. I can drag it back. Stop. 
still so much. There's the first little phrase. I can slow it down even more. And while I'm doing that, apologies for this is going to be annoying to listen to, I can find the starting note. It's a duh. What is that note? That's a, it's a G. So, as I've been doing this, I've been playing along in my head, and dum da ba di da da ba dum di ba da da dum. I can kind of sing that first phrase. Now I know the starting note is that G. I can try and find it. Maybe I'll see if I can switch back so you can see me fail at this. Stop screen sharing. And I'm back. Okay, awesome. Great. I'm getting more comfortable with this. And, oh, still nobody here. Well, maybe I'll entertain myself by learning this tune in front of everybody here for a little while. And if nobody shows up, then maybe we'll call it an early night and I'll go ready to my boys and put them to bed. <laughs> so, here's my G on the pole. So that's the beginning. Dun, da, bun, da, dun, dee, bun. Oh, I got pretty lucky there. And I, wow, I even did it twice. This is actually amazing. I don't, not usually that successful. I'm sure I will fail more for you soon. Oh, there's that C natural, right? I'm in the key of G, so I'm going to need to use that out row. I think that's it. Oh, it's all pull. Okay. And so this kind of thing, you know, occasionally it's helpful to actually think about what you're doing. Sometimes it gets in your way, but sometimes at the beginning to think about what you're doing is really helpful. Um, whether it's here thinking, oh, it's all pull, or thinking, oh, it's all threes and ones, you know, in terms of fiddle fingering. So sometimes those kinds of hints to yourself are helpful as you're getting the feeling in your fingers and getting the tune in your head. <laughs> So now I need to find fingering that does that. Maybe that works. Uh, I need to stop playing that with that finger though because it's getting in the way later. <laughs> and there's a, something uh, that is very common is just hit the same wrong note several times. I do it all the time on the accordion. I see fiddle students do it all the time. They're trying to find a note and they keep trying the same wrong one. So I still seem to do it too, but if you can notice that and notice what you're doing and then tr consciously try something else, that's a helpful strategy. I should add that this is already easier because I've heard this tune a bunch of times before. I haven't, I've probably even tried, yeah, I've tried to play it on the fiddle, like along with people, not sat down to actually learn it, but that's going to help me. Um, you know, I would probably, if I'd never heard this tune before, I'd be starting by just listening to the tune a whole bunch of times, like five or six or seven, um, and then maybe even just listening to the A part some more. Ooh, that's kind of awkward, but I found it. Yeah, each one is a push and then a pull and then a push. Well, I don't really know what happens there. Time to go and listen to that phrase again. I'm going to spare uh, the screen sharing, I think, this time. But I can, um, oh, except I do want to show you one more thing. So I'm going to go back to screen sharing because this is really useful. Um, Screen share, entire screen, here we go. Okay, so one thing that's really cool, and you guys get to see all this madness as well. So um, if I'm over here and transcribe, one of the cool things I can do that's so, so, so helpful is if you go up um, to where it says FX, 
you can bring up this little window and here you can look in detail at all the things you're doing. You can look at, um, I guess I haven't used this a lot. Uh, I don't totally know what that part does. The EQ, you can um, make it so certain parts like the highs or the lows stand out uh, if you're trying to learn something that has lots of parts. You can look at the tuning. So you, if your recording isn't in tune with your instrument or isn't in tune with anything, you can um, move it up or down. Um, you can actually change it um, by like whole uh, or half steps, which are semitones. You can change it by octaves, or you can also just like make it a little sharper or flatter using the sense. Um, you can actually transpose it to a whole new key. Um, and you can change the speed. And this is my favorite thing because you can't get this in any of the other panes. You can save loops. So it says shift click to store, click to recall. So I'm going to put press shift and click this first one. And that saves my first little loop that I found. So when I move it to find a new one, then I will be able to come back to it easily, which is really helpful because often, I mean, how many times have you learned something and you get the next phrase and then you can't remember the first phrase? So this is really useful. Um, and then I'm gonna go back to the other screen and I'm gonna try, sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. I'm gonna try to just pull this along, yeah. About the same distance should be about the next thing. Let's see. Oh. So I have all of that but the end. Let me listen to it again. Whatever that little bit is. I'm actually going to move it and just listen to that bit that I don't have. I'm going to make it slower. Victory for Julia. <laughs> if I can do it again. Ooh. Okay, back to our normal window here. Stop sharing. Ooh. Okay. Stop. Screen sharing. There we go. Okay. Should be coming back. Okay. Let's see if I can remember that in the context of what came before it. But I'm going to play it a couple more times first because that's just this weird section of notes. And like so many things, it's actually not that hard to play. But the intervals are strange, so it's not things that I've played before on this instrument in this key. But I'm just pushing and then pulling. Push, move to the outside row. That's the trickiest part. And then pull, push. Okay, so that's, um, this is a really useful technique called looping. And like that um, does in the video where, or the, in transcribe, where you can highlight a section and it'll play it over and over and over again. I will do that um, without the recording as well. And it helps lock the fingering in and lock the sound in your head. So what I want to do right now is just play that second phrase starting on the maybe the A, but I but I can't really get it in my head relative to where I am. So I think I'm gonna start at the beginning. Oh, it's not quite it. I'm doing that was pretty good actually, but I uh, can't quite find those last notes.
this is my spot. <laughs> <laughs> I can remember that, even though I couldn't remember any of the other stuff. Let's try that again. So, oh, I have to actually go lower. That's what I wasn't getting. Okay, so the melody actually dips down. And this is a thing, you know, I was doing this with a student today. We were looking at a tune. It's easy, and he was doing this today, to hear a big descent of notes and not realize that the last one actually goes up because you hear you're so focused on learning the kind of scope of the tune that you get the downward trend and you don't notice the up so here i'm noticing that it goes up but i didn't notice that it actually goes lower than it was to start that going up <laughs> playing you <laughs> it's normal nope so there I hit the pole instead of the push thought you've looped it to death and you don't need to do it anymore, then you discover that you do. So here we go. Okay, and so the one before that begins on... say and then it'll probably say failure again in a minute but really what I want to show you is that yeah there's like a million of these repetitions of little tiny bits sometimes just one note to the next um, to get it into your fingers and, and hands and in this case you know I have to get the bellows directions as well as what button I'm pushing uh, on the fiddle you've got to figure out how to work the bow and get your fingers down uh, and be on the same string with both of those both of those things um, so we'll do a little bit more of this because you'll see that just like you probably experience, um, I will probably lose some parts of this as I go on. In fact, I already know that there's a spot that I should go back to. Uh, I think it's connecting that first and second phrase. That was lucky. <laughs> the right starting note anyways. Apparently, I need to go back to the very beginning of the first phrase. So there I just used another strategy. I wasn't even consciously doing it, but as I was doing it, I had enough brain power left to think, oh, I should say what I'm doing, which is slowing down. And so often... Um, what I do, you know, I'll be getting something and I'll be then not getting it and I'll be continuing to not get it and I'll still be struggling. And if I slow down, that so often will help. And it's easy because almost everything that we're going to learn from, including my lesson videos, is often going to be actually a little too fast. And so what I'm expecting that you guys do with these, with these videos and with the recordings that I put out 
is um, slowing them down or at least stopping them. Um, in YouTube, oh, I should show you this too. Um, in YouTube, there's a way to slow down videos by 50%. Um, let me get something up. Um, YouTube. Here we can watch something, hopefully without advertising. Uh, let's see what I can find. That might be interesting. Let's watch. Uh, sure, let's watch one of my tune lessons. There won't be ads on that. Yay. Um, Canuckman's Rambles or Gaspé Reel. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to open this, and now I'm going to get the screen sharing going. Oh, if I can remember. Yeah, here I am, talking, talking, talking. Screen share. So here we are. I think, right? Yes. Okay, good. So, obviously, this is pretty fast for learning from. You could try learning from this section, and what you want to do is go to settings, and this will be useful even later on. Hey, I'm not supposed to be ads. Why is there an ad? I'll have to look into that. Click on settings. Go up to speed. I'm going to mute this again. Um, and click 0.75. That slows me down a bit. Or we could click 0.5. And that really slows things down a lot. Let's get that box out of there. Ooh, look at me do that slide. Fun to watch videos of yourself watching videos of yourself. Um, unfortunately, if we go to the 0.25 setting, it just gives us video but no sound. So you can watch me doing it really slowly, but you can't listen to me doing it really slowly. Ooh, but that's epic. <laughs> okay, now if we switch somewhere later in the video, that point five is still is going to be pretty useful. I'm Not talking nervous. very hard. slow motion. Start from the D sharp and the first phrase. <laughs> And that might be slow enough for everybody to learn from. So uh, I'm going to stop this now. But you get the idea. This is a really useful tool. And what I'm figuring that you're doing is as we go along, you know, in a lesson, that you're actually clicking back or pausing the video anyways and trying to play the section that I've played and probably going back and saying, OK, let's try it again. Oh, and I'm going to take this off because now if I don't take it off, all of my videos will be at half speed until I remember to do it. Okay, so um, anyways, I'm expecting that you're going back and saying, okay, I need to hear that again. Whoops. And something I do, I might pause it, I might try it, and then I have my mouse still in the same place, or I'll notice, okay, it's at 620 here at the bottom of the screen. 620 is this place where this little phrase starts. Okay, I'm going to go back to 620 again. And try it again. So that kind of thing will help you to learn the videos also, I think. Uh, or learn from the videos. Oh, goodness gracious. There's all kinds of spam up on this thing. Now, I don't know what happened, but I'm going to stop screen sharing. Okay, and I should be back. There's my, there's my face. Hello. <laughs> um, okay. Now let's just see if anybody's... I don't see anything in the chat window. Oh, and I still see zero viewers. Okay, well, I hope everybody's having a fun night doing something and that you find this interesting a little bit later on. Okay, now, of course, I've just got the gas by reel in my head. That was a great technique for seeing if you can still remember the thing that you've been working on. Oh, dear, which hopefully I can. It started on a G. I remember that much. There's a G. Ah, ah, that was lucky. It popped in my head. It does that big jumping thing. Mm. Wow, 
Okay, and this is the other magic, is sometimes when you stop and you do something else, you're better when you come back. And my best guess is that that's giving your brain time to process information and to like uh, uh, myelin pathways and things like that that uh, you can read about if you read, like to geek out about how brains work and how we learn things, which I do. Um, which book is the myelin in? I think that's The Talent Code by Daniel Coyle. Uh, book I really enjoy just looking at like what we do um, that's helpful for learning um, so but I'm never satisfied with doing it right once well occasionally I am but I shouldn't be so I'm gonna do it again <laughs> I can't even find the starting note so that's a good idea This is a scale, but I'm not so good at my G scales. It's something like that. Oh, and somebody's here. Unless it's just me seeing myself. supposed to go. Time to go back to my recording. I wonder if I can see who's here. I don't think I can. Yeah. Well, hello, whoever's here, if it is you or if it's just me. Um, somehow, it sometimes puts me up as, as seeing myself. Okay, I'm going to go back over to my transcribe. Ooh, and I'm going to have to skip a whole another phrase because that first phrase is the same. Let's try here. See oh, no, that sounds like the, begin the beginning of the B part or the A part second time. That's the section I want. Okay. Da, 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 da. I think that was right so far, except for that last note. <laughs> that thing where you try the same wrong note again? Yeah, I'm doing that. <laughs> That's right. Oh, cats getting into some sort of mess.
Right. So this is what practicing looks like, is playing the same thing, not quite right a bunch of times, and finally getting it right. And I can probably just stop here on this A part um, without playing, you know, more things. I should go back to my screen here so I can see you all. Um, oh, hi, Maria. Thanks for saying hello so I know who's there. Um, so, Maria, you probably can see in the chat, but I'm doing this thing on, um, on practicing here, and I've kind of gotten lost myself here in this. Um, let me get my chat box back out so I can see you. Okay. Um, doing this thing about practicing and learning tunes, um, you can go back and watch the beginning part of um, what I was doing was looking at this program called Transcribe that I use to help me break things down into little sections um, and repeat them so I can so I can learn them and slow them down. So I've been doing that with the A part of this tune, which is called the um, the new copper plate, um, and I've just about got the A part, though I'm struggling on the ending. Um, I've been playing it for a long time here now, and let's see, yeah, it's uh, I've been working on this tune for about a half an hour, and I've kind of got the A part. <laughs> um, <laughs> Hey, that's the ending. saying pull pull is what helps me remember how to play it for a little while. Okay, let's see if I can play this A part and then I'll give it a rest on the how to learn tunes on the button accordion. Oh, except that another strategy that I use um, We'll try this after I play the A part. I'll try the A part. If that's going okay, then one of the things that's really useful to do is to come back to it, take a little break. And sometimes I'll just like put the instrument down, go and make a cup of tea, or like go and like listen to the recording sometimes without totally paying attention to make a cup of tea, or um, play something totally different. So let's see how it goes though with the A part before I make a plan. <laughs> I'll just I'll just go make a cup of tea. You guys can watch my basement. Just kidding. Ooh, cat sneezing. half bad. That was only, I think, one note I hit wrong. That's actually really good. Okay, let me try it again. Yes, that section is still hard. It's that same place. So that really often happens is that the places that were hard once become hard again. Sometimes they are easier for a little while because you practice them a lot, uh, but then sometimes they get hard again, like has happened right here. And so it's often these places too, like this is the the middle of the tune, the like end of the second phrase, and the other place that's hard right now is the ending. And that's very common places for tunes to just be a little different. Sometimes they're the same as another tune or use common patterns, but some, often those patterns are not quite what you expect them to be, so. Still that same bit. <laughs> that 
pull pull thing is still helping me. showing off here. I was feeling so successful. Pull, 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 pull. <laughs> I'm determined. I'm. You're probably sick of watching me play this April, but I have to get it right. And th this is what I like about practicing. This is what sucks me in. Actually, is this feeling of like it's a puzzle, and I'm so close, or sometimes I'm so far, but like I just want to get these notes. And actually, it turns out that this tune's a pretty good level for me on this instrument because I am. I'm like really close, but there's a couple of things that are pretty like kind of challenging. And that is, you know, if it's all like slogging unless you absolutely adore the tune, it's often like becomes not really worth it. So finding a tune that um, appeals to you and just trying really hard on it, sometimes for years, <laughs> uh, I've done that. Um, and eventually, hopefully you maybe get something um, like it. Um, or, you know, what often is more rewarding is finding a tune that's kind of at the right place for you um, on that particular instrument. It took me a while to realize that you know, some tunes are harder or easier on particular instruments. Um, so what are easy beginner tunes on the fiddle are not necessarily easy beginner tunes on accordion or penny whistle or guitar or whatever. A second ending. This uh, B part starts something like that. So I would have to go back and listen to the second ending. Um, and I can tell actually that I've listened to this tune and heard this tune more than I thought because I actually know that there, that second ending is there, which if I had just started listening to it today or like this evening, obviously I wouldn't have um, probably learned it quite that well. So getting, I'm kind of getting the A part now. Before I was to go on to that second ending in the B part, I might try playing a different tune. So I'll try, there's this tune, Dunagor, I've been working on as well. Or no, I haven't been working on this uh, old uh, new copper plate until tonight, but I've been working on Dunagor the last day or two. And I'm starting to get somewhere. Oh yeah, right, we're in G, have that C natural again. Similar problem that's that same middle's place and in the second phrase. And I could actually spend time working on this tune. I would sometimes do that, um, like take a break from the one tune I'm working on work on another one that I'm working on. That's a good strategy if you're trying to learn more than one tune. But um, for you, the sake of you guys here, you are probably having a great time watching me uh, <laughs> flounder on the accordion. Um, but I'm going to try and go back to that tune I've been working on. And again, can I remember how it starts? It starts in the G, and it does that arpeggio thing. Yes, OK. 
pretty hard there uh really getting some gaps so to get those gaps out i might just practice that ending a whole bunch of times more loop it um <laughs> well i can play it on its own better than i can play it attached to everything else so it might require just playing the a part <laughs> Sometimes I'm running, I'm getting running on the bellows. I'm trying to get someplace. Uh, this would be also a great time to decide that I want to listen back to that recording and see if I'm actually playing it right. So let's just do a moment of that. I'll speed it up a little bit. 70% sounds like a good place. I'll just listen to that recording and see how I how I'm doing. <laughs> Okay, so that's pretty good. I did hear there's a little triplet in one place, right at the beginning. I think dum da ba da 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 dum. Is that where it was? Ah, uh, no, it's in that second phrase. Dum da ba da 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 dum. So I wasn't doing that. I would consider that uh, sort of ornamentation. So I'm not going to feel too bad about that. I actually did pretty well with this tune. Very often I'll notice that oh, I didn't actually quite learn the tune as it is. Okay, I think I did pretty good in that A part. So um, that's an, also an important step is going back and listening and seeing how you've been doing. Um, but I'm going to switch over out of accordion mode. Am I going to actually play the fiddle in this video for fun? Since that is the instrument that I supposedly play, I'm going to move up to a greater height. I fit it. Uh, I'll see if I can keep the light out of this screen. Move up to fiddle playing height. Find the fiddle. Tighten the bow. And um, I think what I'll do is maybe finish off by playing. Um, oh, I guess I can't play the. I still don't really know this tune on the fiddle, so I can't play you the new copper plate on the fiddle. Um, though I can pull off the A part a lot better on the fiddle than I can on the on the accordion, I bet, because I'm better at learning tunes by ear and remembering them on the fiddle. Because I have played it for 17 more years than I've played the accordion or something silly like that. Um, faster on the fiddle than it does on the, on the button box. Um, so what I would do, what I'll, here's what I'll do, is I'll play um, the Dunagore that I was playing on the accordion in the A part. Um, Cause that's a fun tune that I've been, um, yeah, another one that I was reminded of at the Irish session here earlier this week that I have played before and, and really liked. Um, also in the key of G.
say one thing, and, and Maria, if you have any burning questions, please uh, type them up there. Um, I do think that some earlier parts of uh, what we did tonight um, will be useful to you because I know you're often interested in some of the tunes that I play in, in these videos. Um, and so if you're trying to look for some resources of how to help you learn them, you can do that. And one thing I didn't say is actually you can, if you just search, um, you can find ways to get the audio out of YouTube videos. Um, if you search like uh, YouTube to MP3 or something like that, you should find a tool that will just let you put in the uh, link to the video that you want the audio from, and then you can download it, and then you can um, use it in Transcribe or another slowing down program um, like I'm talking about earlier in the video. So I think that will be a useful thing potentially for you. Um, but like I said, any further questions, throw them out here. Um, but one thing I was thinking of when I was playing that too, no? Some glare on my fiddle. Um, is it in this tune um, and a number of Irish tunes? I'm using this roll in a place where it's like three quarters the beat. Um, so we're this is a reel, and I could play at the very beginning um, three G's. What I tend to do, I, I've been playing the three G's on the accordion, I like the way that sounds. Um, and I could do it on the fiddle, but I can also make those three G's into a roll. And when I do that, I'm doing this like this one note down bow and three notes up bow, which we've talked about in other videos as well. And like in the situations where you're doing it, um, uh, in other situations and for other reasons, we need to make that down bow really big. We need to cover some ground if we're going to have enough up bow. It depends on how quick, quick you are in your rolls. If your rolls take a long time, you need a lot more bow. And as you get better at them, you'll be able to use less bow and a smaller down bow. But so the that initial D and then the B later on have to be long bows if I'm going to do a roll. And I think that's one of the reasons that rolls can be tricky is not only do you need to actually mechanically do the roll with your right hand, which is difficult enough, but you need to have enough bow to do it in. Um, and that's one thing that practicing uh, just like a scale of rolls isn't going to help, but what you could do, I'm just inventing this exercise in the moment, I just realized. So we've talked about, you know, practicing rolls, drilling them, doing a bunch of first finger rolls. Second finger. Etc. But what you could actually do is you could do this pattern as a, as a drill so the two starts the up bow in the roll. It's maybe more clear if you actually change the note. I'm just playing to a D there. Um, but you can also use the same note. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And of course, you can just make an exercise from the tune that you're working on. Without using the D, I'd just play G all four times. But that way I'm actually practicing getting enough bow for my roll. Of course, it's sometimes like in jigs. Um, I think I played the legacy jig at some point. It's like all rolls and it's all dotted quarter notes. You're like, you don't need, it's all rolls, so it's all long bows. So, but um, for reels, often you do end up with this 
Um, somewhere else in there I use that same bowing pattern not with a roll so I can do that big down bow and all those on an up bow if I've made my down bow big enough so that's you know that's something that I fairly recently realized um, is important is the bow distribution, like how much you're using for what. Um, and that often when you're kind of struggling with bowing, it feels awkward, it's because you're kind of running out of bow at one extreme or the other. And so figuring out how to make some of your bows bigger and others slower but the same size. Uh, so like a big down bow, slow up bow is what we're doing here. Bump, ba da da, yep, ba da da, yep, ba da da, yep, ba da da. Oh, it can be really helpful. Um, I think we'll close there. I hope this is helpful. And um, it's just, you know, so often I think that students don't see um, more experienced musicians practicing and they think that it just happens magically. Um, and yes, things happen faster for me on fiddle at this point because I have so much experience learning by ear. Um, but if I get a tune that's hard for me in the same way that, that you know, at the kind of level that is hard for you guys, um, I find something equivalent for me. It takes me just as long as it's taking you, um, you know, just based on the amount of experience I have. So I think it's really helpful to watch somebody like actually struggle through the process and see how many times they have to play the same four notes and then they get them wrong a little bit later and have to play them again. So I guess mostly I, I wanted to show you the transcribe and just to see, like let you see me struggle because it happens for me too, as for every musician who practices. <laughs> so good luck, happy practicing, and um, come to Maine Fiddle Camp if you want to see me before the next office hours. I'll be there all the June sessions um, and then again in August. And uh, I think early July is the time I've picked out for July office hours because I'm away for a couple weeks in July too with family. So uh, I'll put that all up on Patreon. And thanks everybody. Have a great night.